Okay, so I'm going to talk about report generation, which was a new feature to version 10. Uh, and when I'm talking here, there's uh, there's some uh, you know a decent amount of front end functionality. This all exists on the cloud too. I'm going to demonstrate this inside the desktop product, but uh, uh, but uh, everything that's here works within the cloud platform as well. So when we talk about reports, actually we're talking more generally here about what we refer to as template objects. And here I just listed the uh, standardized template objects that we support in the documentation. Uh, and I'll just go over them briefly. I'm not going to cover them all in this talk. But uh, uh, string templates, uh, which allows you to build templates just working with pure strings. And, and this is a bit like string form, but much, much more powerful. A file template, which is the same idea, but working with a basic generic text file. XML template, which uses uh, our XML support uh, and allows you to create uh, XML files with that. And then probably one of the things which will be most interesting is notebook template, which allows you to create what we think of traditionally as, uh, as reports. So uh, I, I did want to discuss a little bit uh, string templates, though, because actually many of the concepts are similar. And uh, in some cases, uh, it may be a bit easier to understand by looking at strings. And also, this is just so very useful in regular sorts of uh, uh, programming exercises. So what, what I have here is uh, just a little setup. First of all, I have a program which I'm going to run in my template. And my program takes an argument. The argument is a string. And it's going to determine whether or not that string begins with a vowel. If that string begins with a vowel, then it's going to return an. And if it doesn't return with a vowel, it's going to return a. So this is you know, this sort of lexical analysis that you do when you're trying to construct strings for user interfaces that, uh, uh, you know, that can mix and match in some way. Uh, and then I'm going to define the fields that I want to plug in. And I'm defining fields using uh, our new association data structure. So uh, associations are defined using this uh, angle bracket pipe syntax here. Uh, and an association is a list of keys and values. And I am using strings for the keys. Um, I don't have to, but it's just a nice convention. Uh, and then the values, in this case, uh, um, I've chosen a fruit to be an orange, and I have a number. And in this case, notice it's not a string. It's an actual number. So let's go ahead and evaluate these two things and set that up. And now I have my template. My template is going to be a sentence that I want to construct, but I want to construct it programmatically and correctly based on uh, the, the pieces that I'm plugging in. And so in this template, I have, well, first of all, you can see if you've used string form before, this will look a little familiar, but it's a named part instead of a number here. So I'm just plugging in the value of fruit, and I'm plugging in the value of num. Well, this is interesting because num is an integer, I, but I don't have to do two string on it. It will just work. Uh, but then I'm also actually running a little bit of code. I have code embedded in here, and the code is, uh, is highlighted using this angle bracket star notation. And so in this case, it's going to run the function article of what my value for fruit is. And then it's whatever the result is, it's going to plug it in, in here. And then here, this is another function. This function I didn't define, but this is a useful one for working with string templates, pluralize. So plur it's going to determine whether or not to, uh, uh, to return our or ours based on the value of num that's being passed in. So Let's set that up, and we'll run our template apply on the first association. Uh, and I did this in a fresh kernel. That pluralize function requires um, fetching some, or initializing some data, so that's what that was. And there we go. We get our article correct, and we get a pluralized uh, hours there. And if we do it again, we get, once again, our article correct and a singular hour. So 
that's pretty useful. Now going on to notebook templates, uh, so some of the same concepts apply. You know, we, we, we like to work with associations here, and the associations can have, uh, can have right-hand sides that can be potentially anything. They don't have to be strings. Uh, you know, this is the output of that plot 3D. Uh, and I'm going to have to go out of full screen here, so you're going to see a bit of my desktop. Um, uh, otherwise, things are going to get very confusing. Um, okay, and so uh, let me uh, uh, just show you what creating a template, a notebook template, looks like. So I'm going under the file new menu. Oops, uh, wrong choice. Sorry. Going under the file new menu, and I'm going to choose template notebook. And so let's just create our template. So I'm going to I'm going to create a cell. I'm going to type some static text in it, and then I'm going to want to put a date in there. How do I do that? So uh, one of the options that I have here is I can insert an expression. And it shows up in this uh, stylized view, which is uh, noted in the legend there. And now I'm just going to type what I want to evaluate. And as simple as that. OK, so let's keep going. I would like to now create a slot. Now a slot is, that's, that's one of those name fields. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and we're gonna call our slot content. And our content is just uh, default value ABC, that's okay. It'll show us that. And now I'm going to say who generated this report. Um, and I'm going to add another slot. And I'm going to put the name, and we'll just uh, put our default value there. Default value is not really necessary. I'm just doing it because it will help to show what's going on here. And now I can click the Generate button to test out the template. Uh, and, and so let's see what happens. Um, and there we go. It's plugging in on all of our default values. It does, didn't have any real data, but it, did, it was able to evaluate the expression. So uh, that's good. Now I had a, a version of that already saved. So let me just go ahead and uh, set up my data and run my template apply. And there we go. My template apply with my plot 3D uh, and with everything plugged in worked great. Now when your uh, template apply is a generic form, but actually generate document is a bit nicer because uh, uh, it's uh, easier to type, it doesn't open anything behind the scenes, so there you go, same thing. So I'm going to use generate document from here on out. Okay, another example. This one I'm not going to construct live because it's, uh, it's a little complicated, but I just wanted to show very quickly uh, that uh, uh, I have slots. I have something called a repeating block here. A repeating block allows me to iterate the cell over all of the values of currency list, which I'm going to furnish. And, uh, and these, uh, these ones here, these are just references to the thing that's being passed into the repeating block. Uh, I also have some code here. And the code, there's a little key right there, which corresponds to that cell behavior thing there. Uh, it's going to evaluate and delete. So delete, uh, delete the input, leaving the output. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and generate our documents. Uh, sorry, I didn't have time to show you what the code did. But essentially, this is a report which uh, uh, goes and fetches uh, uh, currency uh, exchange rates and shows all of the uh, possible permutations of, of currency reports here. Uh, and that's why it took a little bit to run, because it was going to the web for that. So for the euro, and next for the, uh, for the dollar, and for the yen, and for the sterling. And there we go. That is report generation.